We are back on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk, 1180-1230, KGEO, 1410-KERI, now in Albuquerque, New Mexico at 1000 KKIM, and now on the Internet on knookmedium.com, serving Richmond, Oakland, and the San Francisco Bay Area. Our guest by phone, an old friend of the program, Congressman, former Congressman John Lay Boutlier. So, John, you, you were asked a question on immigration. What's your answer to your, to your question? He asked the question. Um, How would he answer it? Yeah, the question I asked is, uh, <laughs> should <question>. adults <laughs> who knowingly broke the law to come into this country be rewarded by becoming uh, being allowed to become American citizens? My answer is no. That they, I think that they could become uh, legal residents and get a green card, stay here, work here, as long as they obey the law and all. I'm, I don't mind it. But being a citizen is special, and we have a law. We have a series of laws, and so many people have come from overseas and done it the right way, and it's just an insult to them if some other guy cuts the line and gets the same deal. And, you know, you go back to the beginning of this country when uh, the laws were originally set up in each state. In each state, when you were convicted of a felony, along with going to jail, you had your right to vote taken away from you. They, they, that's how the founders viewed the power of voting. It's, it's a gift. It's a privilege. I don't want to give that to people who have so little regard for our law that they will break it to come in here. I admire them for coming and for working hard. I, it, they're not bad people, but they did a bad thing, and they shouldn't get citizenship. You know, but John. I like to. I like to make them legal residents. What's wrong with that? Yeah. You know, this this is kind of a touchy subject for me because I'm I'm actually an immigrant. Uh, my stepdad uh, was in Czechoslovakia during World War II, and and my mom is Dutch, and and his great love was to come to the United States after the war, and he finally made it to Canada, became a Canadian citizen. My mom became a Canadian citizen. Uh, they got married, and then he came over as a Canadian citizen because he couldn't do it any other way. So the entire process took him about 12 years to come here legally. And then the minute he could become an American citizen, he did, and it was it was one of the proudest days of his life. But here it is, 12 years, uh, having to become a citizen of another country to do it the right way. So, you know, and, and God bless his heart. I mean, I know he's, he rolls over in his grave whenever he hears this immigration argument, you know, with people coming across illegally. So I, I'm with you on this. I mean, there's got to be some way of incorporating them into the system, but yet at the same time not giving them citizenship for coming across illegally. So, you, you know, the thing is, too, I'm not sure most of them particularly care about being American citizens. I think they've come, most of them come from Mexico and, or El Central America and have come from very bad economic situation, and they've come here because they will work for money, and they send most of their money home to take care of their family. All very admirable. So I admire them. They are not bad people, but they they shouldn't be rewarded for what they did with the full citizenship, that's all. And I think they don't care that much. I think they want to work here, get the money. If they can be here legally, that's great. It's the Democratic Party that's pushing to make them American citizens for one reason, their votes. Sure. They want, they want to get these people to vote Democrat, which they probably would if they voted at all. Yeah. John, I want to ask you one more about Obama question, because you just did an article recently that I noticed in your on your website, Boots Blasts, which I really like. And you did an article entitled, Is Obamacare Killing Job Creation? Can you expand right. on that a little bit? Well, it's because of last week's uh, bad jobs report and the CBO thing. Um, the CBO came out, uh, the head of it, to Douglas Elmendorf, and said that in a couple years from now, uh, two million people will choose not to work anymore. It's not losing the jobs, it's losing the workers. The workers are going to say, I don't need to work anymore because I'm getting subsidized health care through Obamacare, and therefore I'm not going to work. And most of these people are around 60 years old. They're not yet 65, or they can get Medicare. Uh, and they therefore, they need health care, but they used to work at a job that gave them health care. But now with Obamacare out here, they don't have to keep working that job. 
Oh, okay, all of which sounds great except for one thing. Do you, Marty, and you, Clay, and myself and your listeners, do we want to subsidize people not to work? Which is what this report says we're doing. We're Because we're paying for their health care, they are retiring and not working. And I, I don't. I don't think that's right. If they if they have enough money to pay for their own health care and they choose not to work, that's great. Congrats. But I don't want to pay you not to work. That's not America. No, not at all. And that leads back into the immigration. I don't. I know Clay had another question for you on it. Well, I, I was now that we moved to that other subject. I was going to say by not working, then uh, they get to collect welfare and unemployment and all these other benefits that the country offers as well. Well, no, hold on, but they're different things. It, uh, unemployment, you pay in to unemployment while you're working. So you're entitled to set amount of months of unemployment insurance because, in effect, you paid for it. Yeah, how many weeks? What's been, going, what's been going on lately is Congress is under heavy pressure, and they've done it once or twice, to extend long-term unemployment benefits to the long-term unemployed, which I, used, I think you used to get 99 weeks or whatever it is. They keep extending it way beyond what anybody paid in for. I think it started so at 26 we're, we're weeks. we're paying people not to work there, too. John, I think it started at 26 weeks, then it got extended to 99, and now it's extended I don't know how many months, weeks. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, crazy, it's crazy, crazy, crazy. Nuts. Our guest by phone, John Le Boutelier, former congressman and Fox News contributor. Yeah, I just wanted when to... I make... say it's cra- when I say it's crazy, what I mean is... Where is the talk out of either party in Washington on the news at night and in the country? I don't hear any talk about why can't we get the private sector to create more jobs. We're waiting every month. We're waiting, waiting, waiting. December, 31,000 jobs created. This January that just ended, 113,000 jobs in a country of 320 million people. It's terrible, uh, the lack of job production. We need to be creating 300,000 jobs per month, every month for several years to get the employment situation back where it ought to be. 300,000, and we're give you, creating 30,000. I'm going to give you one reason. It's called Obamacare. That's the single biggest reason, no yeah. question about it. And, then, and you don't hear really anybody making that argument much on the news. I, even the Republicans are... Occasionally they do, but they're so mute about it. And Obamacare has done at least three things on jobs that that we're talking about. The one is people choosing not to work. Not a good thing. Secondly, jobs not being created or slots not being filled because employers don't want to have to give health care. And third, moving people from full-time to part-time, which is really bad because... When you move from 40 hours a week to 29 hours a week so that the employer doesn't have to give health care, that means the worker is getting less money, less benefits, and has to use their own money to go out and get their own health care. Uh, are we becoming a part-time work country? You're being that, forced that's to do That's not it. what made America, man. We are the country that outworks anybody else. We're being forced into becoming a part-time uh, country, I'm, yeah. I believe. Yeah, well, that's got to change. But I, I, I'm seeing in, if an employer actually reduces someone's hours to less than 30 hours just so they don't have to cover uh, them under insurance, they're going to find penalties and fines when they uh, finally do the enrollment in 2016. Well, you know, it seems to me uh, whoever wants to change the country is going to need to run on a position of my number one priority is to get private sector job growth going again. And the, the, this president believes job growth is created by hiring more federal employees, more teachers, more cops. Now, teachers and cops are great. We need them. But that's not the key up by itself to economic growth. We have to have companies hiring people, making things building things, inventing things, improving things, the things that innovation that America is way ahead of everybody else on. We've got to get back to that. And government can't be at war with the business community. 
Yeah. Government's got to be there to encourage the business community. If business goes too far, if they pollute, if they cheat, if they do, uh, you know, rigging the market, we have all that under the law. Let's enforce it. But let's not look upon a private business person as a criminal waiting to commit a crime. Have you heard of a They're state? Not. Have you heard of a state called California? <laughs> yeah. Well, look at California. I mean, yeah. Look, look what's happened. It's crazy. The, the tax base is in Idaho, Oregon, Arizona, Nevada. They've left. Yeah. When we come back from the break, let's talk a little bit about Benghazi and Clinton. Okay. We'll be back in a moment on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180.